Okay, what's up guys? It's uh, Mr. Fabella. We are going to start solving equations using addition and subtraction. So these are just one step equations and should be very simple. So Okay, so first of all, we're going to solve equations. So when I'm talking about an equation, I'm talking about um, a plus seven equals 10. What is a gonna be? And I know a lot of you guys can do this in your head, just thinking, okay, what do you add to seven to get 10, three? but we're actually going to be using properties for this. Um, not because I want to be a pain and make you just, oh, well, you have to do it this way. It's because as we move on in mathematics, um, the problems are gonna get more difficult and soon enough, you won't be able to do these um, type of problems in your head, especially if they're not nice uh, whole numbers, okay? So we're gonna use um, properties to show how we can undo certain things. So let's look at um, some of these problems here. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. X plus three equals seven. Something plus three equals seven. I don't know what that is. Well, maybe you can already tell what it is, but let's take a look at this. So right now, I don't want that three there, right? I want to know what X equals. I don't know what I want. I don't want to know what X plus three equals. I want to know what X equals. So if I subtract the three from there, that's fine. Then I'm left with just X on the left side, but this is not balanced anymore. Equations are balanced. One side is equal to the other side. So if I do that by itself, then now x equals seven, no, that's heavier because I only took away stuff from the left side of the equation. So what I need to do is subtract three from both sides of the equation. I'm gonna subtract three from the left side. I'm gonna subtract three from the right side. Then my equation is still true. If I take away two things from both sides of a, a scale, both sides of an equation, they stay balanced, they stay equal. So if I do that, 3 minus 3 is 0, that's left, and all this left is the x. And then 7 minus 3 is 4, and it stays balanced, and now I've isolated the x. x equals 4. Um, if I'm doing this algebraically, I would be subtracting 3 from both sides. So that's why I want, when you guys show your work, I want you to do it vertically like this. You show that, okay, I'm subtracting 3 from the left side, 3, th 3 from the right side. Keep the equal signs straight up and down, and then now I'm just left with x equals 4. You could also do it this way rewrite everything and do x plus 3 minus 3, 7 minus 3, um, show it that way. But I think the way on the right, left side that I'm showing it, um, it, it makes a, little, a lot more sense to a lot of students. Okay, but that works too, if you want to. So rules for transforming equations. The goal is to isolate the variable on one side. Isolate means you want it by itself. So you wanna always perform the same operation to both sides of the equation. This is what we're about to talk about with properties. If I'm going to subtract three from one side of the equation, I have to do it to the other side. I also could have added three to both sides and it would stay equal. That's not gonna help me find what X is, but I could have done it if I wanted to. And then to undo an operation, perform its opposite operation on both sides of the equation. So over there, we were saying X plus three was seven. So the opposite of plus three is minus three. So that's what that's talking Let's start off with the addition property of equality. So addition property of equality says, if a equals b, if something on the left side equals something on the right side, then if I add the same letter, the same number, same variable on both sides, then the equation is still true. It's still equal. Or given a and b and c equals c, if you do that, they stay equal. So it's kind of hard to tell here, but if I said 10 equals 10, if I added five to 10 on both sides, 15 still equals 15. Subtraction property of equality says the exact same thing. Um, if A equals B, if 10 equals 10, if I subtract the same number from both sides, so 10 minus two, 10 minus two, I get eight. The numbers stay the same. That might not make sense right now because why, why are you gonna write 10 equals 10? Well, we're not, we're gonna do like X plus 10 equals five. To, or x plus 10 equals 15. And to solve that, you would subtract. Okay, so a little more uh, vocabulary here before we actually start doing some problems. Um, inverse operations. So inverse operations. If two operations are inverse, if one operation undoes the other. So the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, which are inverse operations. You sh might have done this already. But here, in this case, add and subtract, those undo each other. If I said five, 
plus 2, I get 7. Then if I undo that by doing 7 minus 2, I get back to 5. So they undo each other. Same with multiplication and division. Right? If I do um, 2 times 3, that equals 6. But if I do 6 divided by 3, I end up back where I started with 2. So now, tell whether the given value is a solution of the equation. So we want to see if the equation is true. The equation is true if 5 equals 5. That is a true statement. 6 equals 5. That is not a true statement. So it's not a solution. When I'm talking about solutions, it's saying here, p plus 10 equals 3a. And I'm saying p equals 18. Is that true? Is it a solution? If, it's, if I plug this in, 18 into the equation, it should equal 38. That would make it a solution. So let's try it. So I would do 18 plus 10. Does that equal? So usually you put a uh, question mark above the equal sign. 38. Well, this equals 28. 28 does not equal 38. So um, 18 is not a solution. 18 is not a solution. So that does not make it true. Let's try this one. 4y equals 56. Okay, let's try it. So 4 instead of 14, you, instead of y, you put 14. Does that equal 56? So 14 times 4 is 56. So check. So 14 is a solution. That's how you check your answer. So once you do a problem and you say, okay, yeah, um, y equals 14 to check your solution to see if it's right, you just put that back into the original equation. So, so this is k minus three equals one. I'm going to think about my checklist. I want to isolate k on the left side. I want to do the opposite operation. So this is minus three. So the opposite of minus three is plus three. So I'm gonna do it to the left side. Whatever you do to the left side, you have to do the right side. So I'm gonna add three here too and I'm gonna just add up and down. So this is like minus three plus three, they cancel each other out. So we haven't exactly learned this yet, but negative three plus three is zero. Or you could look at it backwards, plus three minus three is zero. So all that's left is k, and the equal sign, make sure you try to um, keep the equal signs uh, lined up. And then one plus three is four. And then when it says check your solution, I can check it by taking this four and plug it into k. I can take the four and plug it into k. So four minus three, does that equal one? One equals one, so that's correct. I know this seems very like, well, I, I could just tell, I could just do it in my head. Yes, I understand you can do it in your head, but as we get um, more difficult problems, you won't be able to. So that's why we're practicing with easy problems. So let's check out number six. <clears throat> This is minus 10. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 10. There we go. Minus 10 plus 10 is 0. N drops down. Equal sign goes right under it. And 4 plus 10 is 14. So now I'm going to check. Instead of 14, instead of N, I'm going to put 14. So 14 minus 10. Does that equal 4? Yes. So that means my answer is correct. Um, and then let's try this. Now the R is on the right side. So you're not always going to just subtract whatever's on the left side. You're going to look at the problem and go, okay, I'm trying to find what r is. How can I isolate that? Well, r is on the right side. It's minus 6. So I'm going to use this addition property of equality. I'm going to add 6 to both sides and keep everything straight away. I'm going to change the color here. Um, so minus 6 plus 6 is 0, and this is just r and 15 plus 6 is 21. So same thing, I'm going to take 21 and put it in R and see if it equals. So 15 equals 21 minus 6. Is that true? 15 equals 15, so my answer is correct. Let's try some more. Okay. Here we did um, x plus 3 equals 10. We subtracted 3 from both sides, we got 7. Y is subtracted from 8. How do you undo subtraction? You add. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides, and I get y equals 19. This one, 5 is being added to n. You do the opposite of adding 5, which is subtracting 5, and I get 6. See? 
this game going to be pretty quick. Um, I'm adding 5 to x. You do the opposite of adding 5, which is subtracting 5. So 13 minus 5 is 8. And you can keep it as 8 equals x. That's fine. Usually you write it as x equals 8. Here, n is being subtracted from... Uh, 3 is being subtracted from n, so I'm going to add 3. So n equals 15. And this last one, see this, you don't even have to use any properties. k equals 11 plus 3. Don't subtract anything because you want to combine like terms. 11 plus 3 is 14, so just k equals 14. That's it. So these are all just integers right now. So let's try some with some decimals. You do the same thing. This looks a little scarier, but look at what's happening in x. It's being added by 2.1. So instead of adding 2.1, I'm going to subtract 2.1, so do the opposite. And 7.9 minus 2.1 is 5.8, so x equals 5.8. If I wanted to check that, I plug it into x. 5.8 plus 2.1, does that equal 7.9? Yes, so you did it correctly. Um, number two here, I'm subtracting 3.4. Opposite of subtracting 3.4 is adding 3.4. You add 3.4 to 16, you get 19.4, and then that's it. There you have it. k minus 30 equals 17. Minus 30. Opposite of that is adding 30. You add 30, you get 47. Number four, that's another kind of trick question. You just combine like terms. You just add, uh, or sorry, you just subtract 11 minus 4.2, and then, you know, be careful. It has to be 11.0 minus 4.2, and that just equals t. You don't have to use the property of equality here. You're adding 8.3. Opposite of that is subtracting, so use the subtraction property of equality. And 12 minus 8.3, so 12.0 minus 8.3, that's going to be 3.7. Okay, and then say last thing here, you're subtracting 4.7, you do the opposite of that. You add 4.7 to 5.43, and then you end up with 10.13. Okay, good. And then let's see, translate the sentence into the equation and solve. So I'm going to translate the sum of k and 13. Sum means you add. So k plus 13 is 28. Is is equal. There you go. So now you have to solve it. Use the subtraction property equality because you're adding 13. You do the opposite. So you subtract 13 from both sides and k equals 15. All right. 5 is the difference of t and 4. So 5 is 5 and then is is the equal sign. Difference means you subtract. And if it's, you say difference, you have to put in the same order. So t and 4. So, okay, so you look at what's happening to t. You are subtracting 4. So what's the opposite of subtracting 4? You add 4. So that's 9. 9 equals t. Then again, you can check that by going, okay, 9 minus 4 is 5. That's correct. Okay, now this last one, um, this word problem here. Your parents give you $20 to help you buy a new pair of shoes, shown. I don't know what those are, but sure. Um, after you buy the shoes, you have $5.50 left. Write and solve an equation to find out how much money you had before your parents gave you $20. So, <clears throat> see, um, the problem here is a lot of you guys will want to just solve this, but the question is asking you to actually write an equation first. So, okay, so let's think about what we can write here. In words, the starting amount, so we'll say that's S, plus the amount your parent gave you, so you had some money, then your parents gave you some money. Let's not say what it is, right? Minus the cost of the shoes, because you got money, your parents gave you extra money, then you bought the shoes. Subtract the amount of shoes you had equals the amount left. So now, let's, now that we know that, you start with money, your parents give you money, you subtract money for the shoes, and then you're left with money. Now let's fill this all in. So what do we not know? We don't know um, how much you started with, how much money you had before. So let's do that. Let's start with declaring a variable. I'm going to say let x equal... Okay, now let's start filling things out because everything else you kind of know. So let me see. I'm going to say that's x, right? So this is going to be x plus the amount your parents gave you. Your parents gave you $20 minus, because you're buying stuff, the cost of the shoes. If you can't see here, it's $59.95. $59.95, it's kind of a, you know, it'll be clearer if you were on the book. 
is, that's equals, the amount left. Well, you had $5.50 left. Okay, so now let's put this all together. This looks like a nice equation. I'm gonna rewrite it over here. Um, X plus 20 minus 59.95 equals $5.50. Okay, normally um, if we're in pre-algebra or algebra, you're supposed to combine like terms. But here, I don't really wanna do 20 minus 59.95 because that's gonna give me a negative number. So instead I'm gonna add 59.95 to both sides of my equation because that's going to, so I'm gonna add 59.95 to both sides of my equation because that's gonna make it um, a little easier to do. So this is gonna be x plus 20 because minus 59.95 plus 59.95, that cancels, equals, so that gives me 65.45 Okay, and now I still have this 20. This is plus 20, so I need to do the opposite. I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides. Okay, I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides. So this is gonna be x is left over on the left side, and then 65, 45 minus 20, $20, is going to be 45, 45. So <clears throat> since this is a word problem, it says, um, write itself equation to find out how much money you had before your parents gave you $20. So you had, you had $45.45 before your parents. Okay, so that was a tough one because you had two things you had to add and then subtract. But, you know, hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.